Electrolytes are essentially minerals that are super important for hydration, for fluid balance, for our acid-base balance, and generally speaking, for important functions like nerve transmission, muscle health, and energy, generally speaking. If your electrolytes are out of balance, most commonly you're gonna feel fatigued, brain fogged, and generally unwell. So electrolytes can be impacted acutely, and that's probably when you're gonna feel it most intensely, but you can be chronically dehydrated, and that can chronically lead you to be vulnerable towards some muscle cramps, to a little bit of brain fatigue, to a little bit of trouble sleeping on just a much lower level. So I like to look at potassium, sodium, chloride, magnesium. Sodium is really important for fluid balance specifically. So it's keeping that like blood volume in the right place and it's gonna help also control our blood pressure as well. So I am looking for that kind of sweet spot balance. Um, very high levels out of reference range values are going to make me concerned and put you at risk for things like hypertension or high blood pressure. But very low levels actually worry me as well because this has a huge impact on brain and neurological health and can be a medical emergency if too low. Most commonly, very, very low sodium levels are caused by a condition called SIADH, syndrome of inappropriate diuretic hormone, which is often an unknown etiology on why, but essentially over dilutes sodium in the body, which as I said, could be dangerous. Potassium is very important for our muscular contractions and plays a role in heart contractility as well. Uh, if you are low on potassium, you might be more likely to get muscle cramps. And if you're high on potassium, you might be suffering from irregular heartbeats or even arrhythmias. So most importantly, if it's high, you wanna work with a clinician to understand why. If it's low, you can actually think about consuming foods like bananas or avocados to support your potassium levels. Chloride is very important in acid-base balance. So we think about this more in the context of how acidic or basic is the overall fluid in your body. So typically you're gonna see low levels of chloride that are gonna put you at risk for changes in the pH of your blood and your electrolytes. Magnesium plays an important role in the body. It's involved in muscular contractions, it's involved in your brain health, and it's also involved in bone health. And so healthy, robust levels of magnesium can actually support the health of all three of those areas. You can get magnesium from nuts and seeds, and you can even consider supplementing if that's necessary. When I think about electrolytes, I mostly encourage people to consume an electrolyte powder if they are involved in heavy exercise and can replete with both good hydration and a very simple electrolyte powder that might have a little bit of sodium, potassium, and chloride. There is a role of hydration in your electrolytes. So if you are dehydrated, you might actually see falsely positive elevations in electrolytes that may not need to be acted upon. On the other side, if you are overhydrated, you might see slightly lower concentrations of your electrolytes. Despite the fact that fluid status can play a role in the levels of electrolytes present, in the end, your body is working extremely hard to regulate these electrolytes and keep them in a tight range. So when we're thinking about sodium intake, I really encourage you to consume foods that may naturally have sodium in them and or lightly salt your food. But when we're thinking about kind of more problematic sources of sodium, this would be like a can of soup or any highly processed food that has a lot of excess sodium in it that is an unnatural amount of sodium for your body to handle. I would not say you necessarily have to take excess sodium, although I find in women that are struggling with adrenal dysfunction, so trouble with their cortisol system, they do tend to feel better when they're supporting their electrolytes because part of those electrolytes are being governed by the adrenal system. And people who are extremely active and sweating a lot also benefit from both hydration but also a very simple electrolyte powder. So when you exercise, you are losing sweat, but you are also changing the profile of your electrolytes overall. Now, 
This is very tightly controlled by the body. The body wants to keep your electrolytes overall balanced, but in the end, you might be losing more sodium than is optimal for you to feel well, and bringing back some of those electrolytes can actually be healthful overall for you. I think this is probably related to how much you sweat. So if you're doing short bouts of activity and you are an excessive sweater, then that's probably relevant for you, but also for the endurance person. However, generally speaking, I think about it more for someone who is moving for long periods of time like an endurance athlete.